Another day and another flash test screening. This time we get some mixed reactions, the length of the film, and even one scene described. Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flicks. My name is Chris Wong. So yes, The Flash doesn't come out till June of 2023, and we're getting multiple test screenings. Which just to say that the studio is doing every effort to make this thing right, to make this thing perfect. So depending on the test screening reactions, the studio will determine whether or not the director has to fix it up, spice it up a little bit, and make sure it comes out great. And like before, because a test screening happened, scoopers reached out to their sources and reported on what the audience is currently saying for the current cut of The Flash. Viewer Non says, positive. The worst reaction I've heard is it's pretty good. Nobody I've talked to has disliked it. Casey Walsh says my source loves the film and said this was exactly what he wanted once from DCEU films. Which is pretty much the same from the last test screening where a lot of people enjoyed it, a lot of people liked it. Including things like Sasha Kaye is incredible as Supergirl and a lot of people are going to be incredibly happy seeing her play Kara Zor-El. Another thing is Michael Keaton returning as Batman, that's incredible. Ezra Miller plays an awesome multi multiple variations of Flash, so it does seem like they've got something great here for the Flash movie. Eric Weber says, source who saw the test screen of the Flash last night, it's up there with the Batman. Up there with the Bat- Matt Reeves, the Batman? Now that is kind of interesting to me. I'm wondering what does that mean? Does it mean the quality is up there with the Batman? Is the tone up there with the Batman? To me that just seems to be night and day because the Batman is such a special thing off to the side. It's kind of its own thing. It's dark, it's mysterious, it's detective work, but it's really good. The Flash is part of the DCEU. They're is a Batman. Well, wait, wait, two Batmans in it, so I guess that's part of it. But I think what the source means is probably the level of quality of this film compared to the Batman. But wait, not everything is hunky-dory with the reactions. There are some negative reactions as well. Daniel RPK, there was a test screening for The Flash yesterday for real this time, and I hear it's okay. I was told it's a 6 or a 7 out of 10. At least in their opinion, Take it as you will. So probably the first time we're hearing that this has a negative reaction from this flash test greeting. A 6 or 7 out of 10. That's 60%. Isn't that like 70%? I mean, that would still get like a fresh tomato, but it's like borderline getting into rotten. <laughs> but once again, these are test screenings. This is where they edit the movie, putting in some things that hopefully could work and taking out things that didn't work. This is where they fine tune the movie to make sure that the audiences mostly agree that it's a good movie. So it kind of makes you wonder for the people who judged it as a 6 or a 7 out of 10. What did they not like about the movie? What was in the movie that they said, now nah, that didn't work and, you know, it, it's not as good? Or the people who actually really liked the movie this time and those elements were in there. Why did they like those elements? What would they take out? These are the questions. These are the reasons why these test screenings happen. But there's one interesting information that did come out from this test screening, and this time it was the actual movie length. For this cut, anyway. Viewer Non says, since I've talked to people from three different flash screenings and they verified, I think it's safe to put this out there. As of now, the film runs right around two and a half hours, which is kind of a safe movie runtime. It's not a long three hours. It's not a short two hours. It's like in between two and a half right there. Honestly, you know me, I could definitely enjoy four hours of a movie in one sitting. I have no problem with that. But you know there are people who are like, two hours? That's too short. Three hours? I can't watch three hours. I gotta change my diaper. So two and a half, I guess, is the safe balance between those two types of groups. Then Daniel RPK actually revealed a certain scene in The Flash. There's no real spoilers, it's kind of like a comedic element that they're adding into The Flash. But if you don't want any spoilers, then you know, that's pretty much it. Okay, Daniel RPK said this. There's a scene in The Flash movie where they make fun of the way Barry runs. From what I heard, he's trying to run, but he doesn't have his powers and isn't aware of it yet. So it's that weird running style he does, but without the speed. 
which in context, if this is an adaptation of Flashpoint, then we know that Barry Allen loses his powers when he gets to the other universe, and then with the help of Batman, he gains those powers back. So this could be where he gets stuck in the new universe and tries to run. He can't run, but he's doing that weird arm swing that he does in Zack Snyder's Justice League or the theatrical Justice League. I guess that could be kind of funny. But then there's the conversation on why there's so much test screenings for a movie that's going to essentially be the last DC film coming out the gate. Casey Walsh had a theory. Total speculation on my part, but I'm starting to wonder if Warner Bros. Discovery wants to picture lock the Flash so they can move it up in line in the VFX queue and have it swap places with Aquaman 2. They need the Flash to start building this new universe, and you think they want that connection to Aquaman 2. I'll just say this, all the movies that were coming out post-Flash had have references to this new universe, so if they want to build that connectivity, then they can't have it be the last in line. And if you're still here in regards to spoilers, apparently in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, Michael Keaton would have shown up as the Batman. So it makes sense to have the Flash come out first in which we're reintroduced to Michael Keaton's Batman. It also would make sense for Aquaman 2 to be after the Flash, even Batgirl to be after the Flash. So he may be right, maybe they're really working hard to get the Flash up to speed so that it makes sense in the natural connectivity of this universe by having it come out first before we get to see these cameos and references in those other movies. Or if they're keeping it this way, they probably cut out those references from Aquaman 2, from Shazam Fury of the Gods, from even Batgirl, depending on when Batgirl releases. But I don't know, maybe they don't have to. Maybe they can keep those references in, those cameos in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom and Batgirl and so on and so forth. Makes the audience wonder, wait, what happened? Why is Michael Keaton as Batman now? And it kind of keeps you guessing until you actually finally get to see the Flash movie. But whatever, it's not like we're the studio, we don't make any of those decisions. All we can do is watch it come out and see how it is. But it makes me wonder, now that there's a negative reaction but I believe every test screening has negative reactions but if this is effectively a bigger negative reaction than the previous cut you bet they're going to continue working on the flash movie making multiple cuts gaining multiple test screenings just to get it right so what do you think about this current test screening are you liking what you hear are you excited for the flash or not share your thoughts in the comments down below